The agenda for today will be a brief overview of Tiski, followed by uh, where modern finance sits in the bigger picture, uh, presented by Richard Baxter, our financial director. And then it will be followed by um, the demo done by Tom Watson, one of Tiski's Business Central consultants. So, Tom, if we go over to the next one, uh, just a brief overview of Tiski. We are an award-winning business for software such as Microsoft Dynamics, uh, ERP, CRM, Azure, Power Platform, and many more. We um, were founded in 2011, and since we have grown to more than 100 employees with over 80 of them in delivery roles. On the right hand side is a very plain and brief overview of the full end to end solution that Tiski offers. Um, th the main thing with that services that we offer on the right hand side is that Tiski's whole practice for the ERP side on our business central side and finance and operations is that all of our consultants are either accountants or have a very broad accountancy background. This is quite a a standing out point for Tiski and one of the things that we're very proud of. So if we go to the next one where I'm just quickly going to explain where Business Central and Finance and Operations sits in the bigger Microsoft platform. So if we look at the full Microsoft platform on the screen, it is very busy, I know. There are three main things that I'd like you to see. On the left hand side, you've got your Microsoft 365. These include your Microsoft Word, Excel, Outlook, all of those sort of things. Smack in the middle with a circle, you've got your Microsoft Dynamics uh, modules. These include your CRM modules, so your sales, field services, etc. And then your finance, which is business central finance and operations. On your right hand side, in that little rectangle, we've got our advanced analytics, your Power BI's, your machine learnings, and all of those things. So the those three major things that Microsoft offer are fully integratable with one another. This allows for auto publishing of data from Excel into your finance solution or Word. So there's full interaction from with an Outlook, which includes the ability to create and post sales document without even leaving your email. So all three of those major blocks and circle in the middle are integratable that you can do everything you want on either one of those platforms. The user interfaces allow for simple access and the use for the solution. So it is Implementing this Microsoft Dynamics Business Central and Finance and Operation is fast to implement, it's easy to configure, and the simplicity of these guides innovation in product design, development, implementation, and usability. Dynamics 365 Finance is available both for an on-premise or a cloud deployment where we see more and more of our clients going. So at Tiski, we are dedicated to ensuring that the front and back office uh, operations of your business run smoothly and successfully. We will work with your company's management teams and all of the key departments within your business to implement a solution that creates efficiency, um, but efficiency in um, integration between all of those platforms, um, efficiency in your software, uh, which offers a very attractive uh, return on investment. And with that, our plan is not just to take software and implement it into any company. Um, Tiski's main aim is to improve and enhance the processes of your company to make sure that the software works for you. The integration between these three um, Microsoft platforms or modules um, give a real, real-time 360-degree view of your business. This allows you to make management decisions day-to-day uh, -day without needing to sort data, getting them in columns, getting them in tables, getting them in graphs, because your data is real-time there to be able to analyze. So this is just a brief overview. I can go into a lot more detail. So please, if you'd like some more information on where exactly the Microsoft Dynamics module sit into the bigger Microsoft picture, please do get in touch and I can spend some more time on that. I will be handing over to Richard Baxter, our finance director now, who will explain where modern finance sits in the bigger picture. Great, thanks very much, Kim. Um, Tom, can you just move on to the next slide? OK, so and I will keep this brief because I'm conscious everybody has come here to see um, the um, OCR in action. Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit following on from what Kim says around um, 
what modern finance is and what it means to us as an organization. So um, just for a little bit of background, my, my experience, I've been an, an FD, a financial controller. I've worked in finance departments for many, many years prior to moving across into the IT industry. Um, so I've experienced a lot of the, the sort of the pains and the laborious tasks that um, a finance department have. Um, those sort of day-to-day -day routine tasks that just need to be done, that just take time. And really, the, the modern finance um, sort of model is to try and look at all of those tasks, look at all those um, areas where it's just day-to-day -day tasks and, and where possible, automate those tasks or make those tasks um, less time-consuming and allow the finance department to actually use the data that they're creating rather than spending just their entire lives creating data. So we've got four areas here. And for anybody in the call today who's been on our previous um, sit on the previous um, webinars within this series, you know, we're focusing very heavily on trying to solve those day to day tasks. So automation of daily tasks um, is very aligned to the demo you're going to see uh, the the automation of um, processing and posting of purchase invoices where you have a lot of purchase invoices in your organization, this is a very, very, very high um, time consuming task and anything that can be done to, to speed that up and make it a more automated process obviously aligns much more to a sort of a modern approach. So that's particularly what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, predictive analytics, the, this, is, this is leaning much more towards using the data that you're creating to predict what the future looks like. Um, you know, historically, finance departments always look backwards you know you, you produce your monthly accounts after the month has completed there's very little you can do other than accept that as the facts and move on In using predictive analytics and machine learning and artificial intelligence as well is allowing you to use the data that you've got today to predict and understand what's going to happen in the future in a much more structured way than we could ever do historically. And a number of our previous webinars sort of touched on those, particularly things around cash flow and those kind of things. So um, if anyone hasn't seen those, they're all available on our YouTube channel and, um, and, and well worth a watch. Uh, real time information as well, being able to get data into the system actually as it really happens rather than always being behind the curve to give you information to drive forward which is crucial when you're using things like predictive analytics because you need that data to be absolutely up to date in real time and i think you know what what we're trying to say and one of the things that tiski do as an organization is we work with organizations to look at how they work and look at where modern technology can really help to drive finance departments particularly forwards to to um, remove all of that sort of day to day tasks and allow people to really start drilling into what they've actually got and the value of the data that they actually have to 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 grow themselves as an organization and give a real value uh, to the rest of the organization. So specifically today, we're going to look at the um, the OCR functionality and I'm going to hand over to Tom, who's hopefully going to show us exactly how that works. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, yeah, so today we'll be uh, looking at the OCR demo. So, yeah, uh, OCR it stands for Optical Character Recognition, and it allows the use of machines to uh, recognise aspects. Uh, in this case, uh, from the case of this demo, it's going to be of a purchase invoice. This knowledge is built up so that the machine will learn what is expected where on a document, and then using OCR, it allows this to be translated into a document. So in this demo, we'll be using um, Continua OCR to create the purchase invoice, and we'll be matching a purchase order line and a purchase receipt line on that uh, purchase invoice. There's some tip, steps to take before this is possible. So what we do is we, we uh, send off an email uh, with the, the PDF of the document. This doesn't have to be a, a, a one PDF per email. You can send multiple PDFs in one go and they'll be returned. So they'll go, uh, as you can see in these queues, they'll go from pending OCR to ready to import. So each each day you can send off um, all the uh, invoices and they'll be ready to import so you can, can run that job. So you, you can see we, um, we have some uh, queues available. You've got uh, some activities at the top for uh, pending OCR, ready to import and ready to register. We've got information about the purchase um, documents and where they are. So we've got some open purchase invoices, some for approval, and I'll talk about approval uh, later. And then we've also got that same on the cre uh, credit memo side. So uh, let's uh, let's click uh, ready to register. So as you can see, we've got an invoice here on the uh, right hand side. We've got what was sent to the OCR, um, at continuous OCR for uh, recognition. And there's nothing mapped at the moment. So what we can do is we can uh, click into uh, the document. 
and click process and recognize fields. And then what it does is it goes away and it starts to see what it's expecting on the invoice. So you see that invoice numbers matched up with the invoice, the invoice dates matched up with the invoice date, the due dates matched up with the due date. So you can see where you've got um, orange fields that they're the, the field name and the values are highlighted in blue. So straight away we can see that something not quite right about this invoice number. So what we can do is we can just left click and highlight a value, which then updates straight away. So what we're doing there is we're teaching this template that this is what the invoice number looks like. And then the next time it comes along, um, it will retrieve that data. So let's let's show that quickly. So if I remove that template, then we can click back in. So if I run that process again, it's now going to recognize that. And as you can see, that invoice number is now being remembered and it's it, the, the system learned that this is the place of where this invoice number is. So if we scroll down, we can see more information. We've got some our contact. It's picked up the order number as well, and we're going to be using that later. And it's also picked up the uh, amount. So it's got the, the net VAT and gross amounts. Also, you can see that there's, a, there's a grid in the middle of the, uh, the document, and that's relating to these lines. So these lines have also been found. And within the system, what it does is it will check to see what, syst uh, uh, what numbers you have in your items, and it will uh, translate those into numbers for this uh, this vendor. So what we can do is we can then go to process and match lines. So these are all the lines which this ha uh, this um, vendor has. And as you can see, there's a difference at the moment, so it's not matched any lines towards anything. So what we can do is you can click process and filter an order number. And you can see that's that, that's all uh, is on this order number. So we're, we're then able to uh, toggle match here. And when we've done that, we then have no no difference. So what's that's doing in the background is the system now has matched the receipt lines to the order line. So if, if we imagine what that would happen with a, an invoice without OCR, is you that you, you, you're doing the get receipt lines and you're using order lines to create your invoice. So once we've done that, we've then got no uh, errors. So what we can do is we can click process and register. I'm just going to select purchaser. And just run through that. And then it's going to create the invoice. So this is actually create the purchase invoice for us. Uh, all the details have been pulled across. So on the lines, we've got the receipt line uh, for the for that chair. We've also got the order number. So that's pulled it through from Business Central. So there's um, it's updated aut automatically to pull on this invoice. Then also on the right hand side that you can see that the documents uh, attached to. So it's easy to to view that document. It's not it's it's there to, for you to view. So. So yeah, once uh, once we've got this uh, document uh, attached, there's, there's also uh, certain things we can do. So we are then able to, um, once the system's learned what the uh, template can do, uh, we, we can then turn on certain things. So we can say, for example, um, we can have an auto matching and we can have um, uh, an approval process and we can also use other documents. So if I just show you what a template looks like. We see that we can have the um, change in the date format, for example. So it, it, this being an English one, it, it was day, month, year, but you can have an American one being in month, day, year. And the system knows that's what it's expecting. It's expecting to recognize some lines. And also the, uh, if we look under the purchase documents fast tab, you can see that we've uh, got some auto matching options. So it was it was set to off on this template. But once you turn that on, you then got options to say whether you're going to receipt, use the receipt only, use the order only, or use a combination of the two. and then. Essentially, what will happen is that where I applied that filter, it will do that map automatically and it will automatically match. Um, and then you can follow an appro approval process through through the system to um, to get that invoice posted. So just one last thing to mention is um, on, o on the um, OCR. Um, we, on the uh, Documents available. We've got some. Uh, we were showing there the purchase invoice, but you've also got options for a, a, purchase, a purchase credit memo. We've also got options for some GL documents and contact documents, and we can also create sales orders. So based on uh, a customer's purchase order, for example. So that was a quick demo of the uh, OCR. And if there's any questions, uh, please let me know.